By the way, folks, in case you don't know it, this is the only media in the entire world that so far has told you the truth about what happened at the World Trade Center towers. Those planes did not bring those buildings down. Period. If you believe that in your wildest dreams, uh, you got nothing, absolutely nothing between your ears. And I'm not asking you to take my word for it. Seek out some explosives experts and ask them. They'll tell you. They'll tell you. Go and talk to some architects who build skyscrapers. These huge towers that stick way up into the sky. Part of the design is the knowledge that airplanes sometimes crash into them. And they must be designed to withstand a crash into the building by the biggest planes in the sky. They're all built to withstand that. Oh, yeah, people will be killed. Yeah, the plane will go into the building. Yeah, there will be fire. Yeah, there will be flames. There will be destruction. There will be people die and killed and wounded and all that stuff. But they will not bring the building down. You got that? If you don't, don't believe me. I'm not asking anybody to ever believe anything that I ever tell you. You go check with the people that know. And you'll find out that old Bill Cooper is telling you the truth. They're, they're engineered and built intentionally to withstand crashes into the buildings by major commercial airline airplanes. And these planes did not hit any of the main structural members at the lower levels no of the buildings. They hit at the upper quarter uh, of the buildings. And, of course, it would affect the structural integrity of those floors. But you'll notice that the structural integrity of the buildings were so sound that where the airplanes actually crashed into the building did not cause the upper levels to collapse into that floor. So how would it cause the entire building to collapse? It, it not only doesn't make a, a lot of sense, it's absolutely impossible. <laughs> the way yeah, these well, buildings are designed, engineered, and built... They are built to withstand because they know from past history that airplanes run into these high skyscraper buildings. Okay. And so it's, it's engineered into the buildings to withstand the crash of a modern airliner. Well, yeah, and as they launch this investigation, um, I would certainly hope, but of course this is probably <laughs> beyond real realism, but I would certainly hope that they would, the investigation would start at home uh, as far as what has actually occurred. But, well, uh, they're, they're already uh, short-circuiting that. Have you noticed that <laughs> Mayor Giuliani and uh -huh. Governor Pataki of New York State uh -huh. are replacing all of the emergency workers with National Guard troops? Uh-huh. And the, who's, who's better qualified uh, to be on the scene and to work and rescue people and treat people, um, the National Guard or the fire department, police department, uh, EMTs, medics, and, and people like that? Right, right. Couldn't agree with you more. So what's, um, the, what's the purpose of replacing them with the National Guard? To circumvent uh, any, any realistic investigation as far as what happened. Not only that, but to maintain silence because National Guard members are under military orders and they don't have the protection of the Constitution. Uh-huh. Right. Once they're activated, they come under the Uniform Code of Military Justice, which says, if you're given a direct order to keep your mouth shut, you better do it or we can lock you up forever. Yep. Yep. Certainly don't need uh, any stories spun about uh, any ATF or <laughs> CIA involvement. Or <laughs> discovery of secondary explosions in the building that may not have uh, blown up like they did in Oklahoma City. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then later denied that they found, although uh, there are hundreds of witnesses that all well, saw and heard and watched them remove secondary explosives of a military type from the Alfred P. Muir Federal Building. And certainly, and, and right after that happened, immediately after that building exploded, uh, the media coverage uh, was somewhat uncensored at the time. And a lot of information was leaked out as to what had really had taken place mm -hmm. uh, along the lines of, you know, as well as like the, the John Doe's. Yeah. That, and, uh, and then when the government took over, the media uh, Watched it. Re reports uh, 
um, stabilized and, and presented only one official explanation and never talked about any of those other things ever again. They completely destroyed it. Yeah. They destroyed all evidence, all oh, refuge. Yeah. Every remnant of the building was uh, demolished, uh, picked up, carried to a site, buried under the ground so you couldn't even get to it if you wanted to, and then they put a fence around it which says United States government property, um, keep out. If you go into this place, you're subject to so many years of prison and $10,000 fine and so on and so forth. I've talked to architects. I've talked to explosives experts. It absolutely could not have happened. If it did happen, it would have only brought down the floors above uh, the area where the plane crashed it would not have ever resulted in the entire building imploding upon itself. How in the world, now listen to me very carefully, if an airplane crashes in the top quarter of a skyscraper, which has been architecturally engineered for the stress and the strength that it takes to withstand an airplane crash because they expect airplanes to crash sometimes into skyscrapers, how in the world would the destruction of the integrity of that floor of the building cause the building to fall in upon itself all the way to the ground? What it would cause would be the upper stories to fall in on that floor, period. We know that there were tremendous explosions on the lower floors of the two twin towers of the World Trade Center the buildings that brought those two buildings down. They did not come down as a result of the planes crashing into them. Now this is a fact, and you can check with architects who design, who design skyscrapers. Skyscrapers stick up high into the air. There is always the possibility that an aircraft could crash into them, and it has happened on many occasions in the past. For instance, an Air Force bomber crashed into a skyscraper and didn't cause it to fall. Planes have crashed into skyscrapers over the years, folks. None of them have ever fallen. They're built understanding that an airplane could crash into the building and the structure is designed to withstand such a crash so that the damage will be confined to that area. Those planes crashing into those buildings did not cause those buildings to collapse. They're what we call hard targets in the military. Steel-reinforced concrete buildings with strong structural members that can withstand hurricane winds. They can withstand an airplane crash. They can withstand all kinds of things. And the only thing that can bring them down is shaped shaped charges placed upon the main structural members in order to shatter and cut those reinforced concrete pillars and allow the building to collapse. Believe what you want, and you will. I know that. But uh, don't be foolish in what you believe. Don't take my word for it. Talk to people who do it for a living, who bring down buildings for a living, demolition experts, people in the military who are explosives experts, people like me who went to booby trap schools and were taught how uh, to bring down hard targets by the military. And uh, I'm telling you right now, you don't do it with a truck full of fertilizer and you don't bring down huge buildings like the Trade Center Towers by crashing planes into the upper floors. Something blew up on the main structural members at the bottoms of those buildings, both of them, that brought those buildings down. Folks, everybody in Manhattan heard the explosions. The mainstream is not going to give us a real story about this? No, they're not. And they, they never will. For instance, they're going to, you're going to hear from now on that the two planes that crashed into the top of the World Trade Center towers are what caused the buildings to collapse, and that's a bold-faced, bare lie. They can't, it, 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 they can't hold any, if it's that obvious, they're going to have to uh, may, maybe make up a story about a truck bomb uh, 
Well, they'll, but, they may make up a story, they may not. I think they're going to blame it on those planes, and they're going to ignore all accusations otherwise, our testimony of experts, just like they did with the Oklahoma City Alfred P. Muir Federal Building. So many explosive experts and people who know about explosives and demolition people who bring down buildings all the time have testified and written papers and books and all kinds of stuff saying that uh, that that truck full of fertilizer parked in front of the building could not possibly have done the damage that they claim that it did. Right, and the support column that was nearest to the truck was not, uh, was not broken where the others farther away yeah, were. But, but it's reinforced... never shown the videos. It's reinforced concrete. It's a hard target. It takes shaped charges to, to, to snap a reinforced concrete pillar. You can't do it even with high explosives parked out on the street. It oh, can't yeah. happen. I got the video by General Parton explaining all about that. Yeah. They never showed us the videos. They never showed us pictures of uh, Vince's Foster, or at least not the real ones, or anything. They never, uh, and that's what we got to demand is more information. Yeah, well, you can demand all you want. They're not going to give it to you. <laughs> they're, they're just not going to give it to you. Even though I knew that this was going to happen. Even though I had predicted it for years that it was, I was still, and, and still am, shocked by it. Um, terribly hurt by it, as I know that all of you listening are. I, above most people, way beyond the imagination of most people, I understand what the consequences of this are going to be, and I don't think most people in this country or even around the world understand that, uh, or have even an inkling uh, of, of what it is beyond the fact that they know nothing is ever going to be the same. Things are going to change uh, drastically. They know that. But they don't know how much. They don't really understand or know the effect when uh, that's been the whole purpose of why I have been trying to convince everybody to understand that these things were coming. Because I know the goals of, of, uh, of, of the traders in Washington, D.C. that want to bring about world government. I know the goals. And not just here, but around the world. It's a, it's a cabal of people who are interlocked through secret societies and organizations all over the world who are bringing about this one world government, this new world order. And uh, I know what their plans are. You see, they, not, none of this is secret. It's not secret. They don't make any secret of it. It's all out in the open. It's all been published. It's all written down. Anybody can get their hands on it, and you can read it. You, and and I've, I've read it to you over the air. I've given you the sources. I've told you what's coming. They've told us what's coming uh, out of their own mouths. And I saw the official plan that's top secret. It's held by the United States government to allow it to come about. Did you know that uh, <laughs> Bolshevik, Bolshevik, what does that mean? You know, it's sad to be able to see what is coming just as clear as if it were happening right in front of my eyes at this very moment. To be able to see it at a future time because I've studied these scum for so many years and I've watched what they have done in other countries to defeat their enemies and establish their socialist utopian slave market. And so I can anticipate and with a little research, a little listening, a little reading, I can pretty much tell you exactly what they're going to do whenever they're going to do it. And you all know that. Those of you who have been listening to me for all these years, you know that I have been consistently the only person in this country who has made accurate predictions each and every single time. And I'm telling you right now, it is sad. And it is frustrating to know that something is going to happen and not be able to convince people that it's going to happen and be able to stop it. Long before this wave of terror began in the United States, I told you over this radio broadcast that it would happen. I said that New York City, I was saying that before I ever had a radio broadcast, and it's on tape in every one of my lectures, I said New York City would be the first strike of terrorists in this country, followed by some place in middle America. Wow. 
Why? Because I know, like they know, that Americans have grown complacent over the many years. They don't believe that it could happen in this country. They want to disarm the American citizens, take away our weapons, so that we cannot oppose the tyranny that is coming. And to do that, they have to create terrorist incidents and crimes. And people who walk on the schoolyards and shoot great numbers of children and into shopping malls and McDonald's restaurants. And if you'll notice, this always happens just before major gun control legislation is coming up for a vote. And you all sit around and really actually believe that's an accident? Are you insane? It's social engineering in the grand scale and the classic method of Karl Marx, Friedrich Engels, D.I. Lenin, Stalin, Fidel Castro, Che Guevara. If you don't believe me, quit sitting on your lazy butts and get out the history books and read it. It's all there and you can make the same predictions that I have made and continue to make and be absolutely 100% correct if you will just understand that he who does not study history is doomed to repeat it. That is the truth. As each section was completed, 25-ton cages of metal reinforcement rods were lowered into the slurry-filled trench. With the cage in place, concrete was poured in. Since the concrete had a greater density than the slurry, the slurry was forced up out of the trench and could be used for the next section. In this way, an underground wall was built completely sealing the site. Excavation began. As each section of the slurry wall was revealed, workers drilled holes through the wall and casings were pushed through down to bedrock on the far side. Steel tendons were then inserted through these holes and socketed into bedrock, bracing the wall against external pressure. Concrete footings were formed and poured into bedrock. Massive assemblies of steel beams called grillages were laid on these footings. Each grillage would anchor one of the load-bearing tower columns. A reporter from CNN and his little camera crew got in to Osama bin Laden's secret hideout and conducted an interview. If you don't believe me, tune in to CNN. They're probably running it right now as I'm speaking. And if you believe it, you are one of the stupidest jerks that ever lived on the face of this earth. And whatever is going to happen that they're going to blame on Osama bin Laden, don't you even believe it. Another social illusion, social engineering project to change the minds and the attitudes and the beliefs of the people of the world, and especially the United States, to bring about one world socialist totalitarian government. Can you believe what they were saying for a while? That Timothy McVeigh, the CIA, the NSA, the FBI, the Defense Intelligence Agency, could not find Osama bin Laden in their wildest dreams. But Timothy McVeigh and Terry Nichols could and recruit him to be their partner in blowing up the Alfred P. Muir Federal Building. Bullshit! How stupid can you be? These guys didn't have a nickel between them. Not a nickel between them. How dumb can you be? How stupid can you be? Put me in charge of the CIA. I guarantee you I will have him in custody in two weeks flat are dead, take your pick. Take your pick. Give me that budget, those resources. 
those personnel, I guarantee you he will be mine in two weeks. And you know what? If I had a few loyal, good Americans who were willing to donate enough money, certainly not even a drop in the bucket compared to what they really have in these intelligence agencies to really go after him, I could still have him in two weeks. Piece of cake. So why, why do all these fools believe this charade? That a CNN reporter and his little camera crew can do what all the money and all the assets and all the eavesdropping and all the intelligence and all the satellites and all the undercover operatives in the world can never do. It's because they're not trying. They don't want to. Osama bin Laden is their creation, and he is serving them well. When in hell are all you people going to wake up? A special interest is the powerful society in Afghanistan, in ancient times called the Roshaniya, or the Illuminated Ones. There are actually references to this very mystical cult going back through history to the House of Wisdom at Cairo. At one time, Arabia, ladies and gentlemen, was the seat of all of the knowledge in the world. In fact, they had the only universities in the entire world. The major tenets of this cult were the abolition of private property, the elimination of religion, the elimination of nation-states, the belief that illumination emanated from the supreme being who desired a class of perfect men and women to carry out the organization and direction of the world, belief in a plan to reshape the social system of the world by first taking control of individual countries one by one, and the belief that after reaching the fourth degree, one could communicate directly with the unknown supervisors who had imparted knowledge to initiates throughout the ages. Wise men will again recognize the brotherhood. In fact, the brotherhood today believes in these very same tenets. And if you are indeed observant, you can see that this is exactly what they have done and what they are in the process of completing. It's called socialism. Can you hear the echo of the Nazi party? Osama bin Laden is still out there and he owes us. And if, if we don't think he can do it, we're kidding ourselves. So do you know that he was created by the Central Intelligence Agency when Afghanistan was fighting Russia? Right. Do you know that he was trained by the CIA? Right. That he was shown how to conduct guerrilla warfare operations, and how to conduct terrorism against the Russians by the Central Intelligence Agency? We created this guy. We created Saddam Hussein. This whole thing is our own creation. That's right. We create these boogeymen, and then we, then we go out and tear everything up and kill everybody to try to, you know, supposedly destroy the monsters we created, which we know what it's all about. It's about the New World Order. He was created by George Bush and the CIA to fulfill this particular role, to be the boogeyman to create the power in the United Nations to reach out and slap down nation states. Huh. He didn't think this up. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I tell you what, it's incredible. Yeah. So... I mean, what, what, what is the end game of all this? To make slaves of all of us? Yes, exactly. Absolutely correct. To dead. disarm the entire world wow. and create one world government. You see, we've got to make sure that even if we blow Saddam Hussein up tonight, that another one doesn't spring up. We have to put power in the United Nations, and there has to be a world police force to take care of these kinds of people. Wow. Why do you think they didn't kill him during Desert Storm? They killed John F. Kennedy on Elm Street. They can't kill Saddam Hussein. That was the nightmare on Elm Street. We must speak the truth about terror. Let us never tolerate outrageous conspiracy theories concerning the attacks of September the 11th. Malicious lies that attempt to shift the blame away from the terrorists themselves, away from the guilty. These are not opinions to be debated. 
These are facts. 